Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss yet another unusual discovery of a black hole that's currently very very difficult to explain, and actually a black hole right here in the Milky Way galaxy. And specifically what seems to be the smallest black hole ever seen with a mass believed to be completely impossible. And that's of course based on our understanding of how black holes usually form. And so let's discuss this recent discovery of the object, referred to as G3425, talk about why it's unusual, and also speculate about how it could have been created. But first, how exactly was this detected, and why is it that this is the first time we've ever seen this? So normally when it comes to smaller black holes, so not the ones in centers of various galaxies, we only see them when they start emitting a lot of light, usually by consuming matter from their partner, and by then producing very powerful X-rays. But in the last few years, ever since the launch of the Gaia telescope, researchers have also started to discover inactive or dormant black holes, usually in orbit around various stars, even though they're practically invisible. And the reason this is possible now is really because of all of the data collected by Gaia. The Gaia telescope is about to finish its fourth observation and release its fourth data, which means that we now have data for approximately 1.5 billion different sources, or approximately 1% of the entire Milky Way. And the data for each of these sources is extremely accurate. It shows us the exact motion, the precise light coming from each individual star, and thus allows us to calculate any deviations from the overall vector of velocity. And so a few years back, we had our first discovery, Gaia BH1, or Gaia Black Hole 1. First dormant black hole, discovered by Gaia, orbiting a distant star. And so within just a couple of years, three such black holes have been confirmed by Gaia, all dormant, all invisible, and all with somewhat unusual masses. And the latest one, Gaia BH3, seems to be one of the strangest ones. It essentially contains one of the largest stellar mass black holes ever found, 33 solar masses in mass, that's also kind of difficult to explain. But you can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And so because of these astrometry techniques, we now have a lot of data to discover a lot of these hidden giants. But just a few months after this discovery, researchers using Gaia data combined with the Large Sky Area Multi-Object Fiber Spectroscopic Telescope, or LAMOST for short, discovered something else super bizarre. By looking at deviations in orbit, and specifically looking at stars with radial velocity variations, and then combining this data with the Gaia telescope, they discovered one object that really stood out. This one star, that seemed to be a red giant, roughly around 5900 light years away from planet Earth, seemed to orbit something invisible really close to it, but something that once again was not emitting any light. And not just X-ray light, any light suggesting that this could not have been some kind of a smaller, less visible star, and definitely not a neutron star, and not an active black hole. And because the motion of the star was very specific, based on the observations of this red giant, researchers were able to determine the exact mass of the invisible object. And it appeared to be 3.6 solar masses. Which is really bizarre, because that's right in the middle of what we usually refer to as the mass gap or basically a kind of a gap in masses of neutron stars and black holes where we don't actually know if anything can even exist. And that's because for the most massive neutron star, there is a mass limit referred to as the Oppenheimer limit. It's believed to be approximately 2.3 solar masses, but we know that certain magnetized neutron stars, especially the ones that spin super fast, can technically go up to about 2.9 solar masses for at least some time. But after this, they usually end up collapsing into black holes. Whereas for black holes formed from a supernova, and specifically a type 2 supernova, all of the previous calculations, where they basically assumed some kind of an extreme star, containing only helium core, the minimal possible mass for a black hole is 5 to maybe 7 solar masses. So here, through supernova, there's just no way to create this. Yet it was pretty clear that this was a very specific binary. An invisible object, and a star approximately 2.7 solar masses in an almost perfect circular orbit. Ok, so what exactly are we looking at, and if this is a black hole, how can it possibly exist? And one of the bigger mysteries here is actually in regards to that orbit. In many previous cases, all of these black holes and their stars 
would often contain elliptical orbits, implying some kind of a disturbance in the past, and this disturbance was always believed to be the result of initial supernova. So in essence, once the star explodes, and once it forms a black hole, the needle kick from the supernova would nudge the system just enough to produce elliptical orbits. And so with previous discoveries by Gaia, pretty much everything kind of made sense. Here though, it really doesn't. Circular orbits suggest that there was probably no supernova, or if there was one, it was extremely weak. Which once again brings us to that original question. How can this form and what exactly is this? And while most of this paper, by Song Wang and his team, is essentially dedicated to potential solutions. But none of them so far seem to be definitive or even make sense. For example, one of the propositions was that, well, maybe this is just super tiny stars or even binary stars. They're just exceptionally difficult to detect. But here, following an extremely accurate analysis from the LAMOS telescope, they really found no light whatsoever. Even a tiny star would produce something, but not in this case. And so because of that circular orbit of 880 days, the overall conclusion from the study was that whatever is here, it's been stable and undisturbed for an extremely long time. Which doesn't really make sense when it comes to assumptions about black holes and specifically black hole binaries. These are not expected to be stable or undisturbed locations. On the other hand, scientists have also assumed that maybe this is a result of a capture. But once again, because of the orbit, that would be practically impossible. And so of all of the solutions they provide, only one so far kind of maybe makes sense. And here we have to assume that this used to be a triple system, and that black hole used to be two separate objects. And here let me introduce you to a slightly more unusual concept proposed by theoretical physicists a few decades back. Here we have super bizarre objects known as TZO or thorn zitkow objects. And well, in a nutshell, these are stars inside stars. Or specifically, these are neutron stars inside red giants. A result of a binary system where a neutron star that existed before eventually got absorbed by a larger star and basically starts to reside inside of it, slowly consuming the core and everything within for up to a million years. And though at first this was just a hypothetical proposition, there are now a few candidates, including HV2112, that are possibly these types of objects. You can actually find the list of candidates in one of the links in the description. And so in essence this would be a kind of a hybrid star that after a few hundred thousand years would slowly consume the red giant from within, eventually becoming either a powerful long-lived pulsar or if enough mass was consumed would collapse into a black hole. And previous studies have actually assumed that up to 200 such objects should currently exist in the Milky Way. But we've never really seen the end product. And while the only explanation that potentially makes sense for this star is that maybe this is what we're looking at. A TZO object, formed from a previous neutron star colliding with another red giant, eventually consuming it from within and eventually becoming a slightly bigger black hole right in that mass gap. And here this would explain why we're seeing circular orbits, no disturbance whatsoever, and more importantly, how this black hole is even possible. But naturally, this is still just a speculation and a lot more evidence is needed to see if this is true. If true though, this would be the first such object discovered ever and would definitively confirm the assumptions about TZOs. But naturally, the much more important and bigger solution now would involve additional observations and of course confirmations. And that's because like in previous studies, there might be some mistakes here specifically in regards to distances. And that actually happened before. A separate astrometric detection of a black hole from a few years back was also very bizarre and somewhat unusual, but turned out to be just a distance measurement error. Or technically not an error, but just an assumption based on the way we get data and the way astrometry works. And so there's actually still a chance that maybe the distances here are kind of incorrect, and maybe this is just a normal black hole much farther away. But at least for now, this is still a super exciting discovery, and a discovery that if confirmed, would basically suggest that hundreds of such objects must exist in the Milky Way, and will most likely be seeing more of them in the near future. But until more confirmations, or more discoveries from this object, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, 
Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.